This is KGW News at 5. Now at 5, a tragedy sparks action. The murder of a Vancouver mother spurs her friends to push for a change in Washington law and hopefully prevent another senseless death. Wide out in the gorge, snow and ice this morning made for some slippery driving. Matt's tracking what else is on the way. Plus, lattes and life lessons. How a coffee stand inside a prison is inspiring inmates to turn their lives around. They needed those improvements yesterday. First at five, a call for safety improvements along TV Highway that many say are long overdue. A Hillsborough woman was hit and killed trying to cross it near Northwest 341st Avenue Tuesday morning. It's not the first time we've seen crashes there, which is why her family says something needs to be done. Lindsay Nadrich is live where it happened. Lindsay, this is actually something her family has voiced concerns about before. Yeah, her family says they've called the ODOT many times over the years because they were worried about something like this happening. This is where 51-year-old Leslie Shemedeke would walk to and from the bus stop every day. And as you can see along this stretch of highway, there aren't very many lights. It was dark when she was trying to cross, and there's no crosswalk here. And I would say, you have to go out of your way. You know, you have to find a crosswalk. And she said, do you know how far that is? And it is. It's ridiculous how far that would be for her to walk out of the way. So they've got a bus stop, but they have no way to get to the bus stop. Leslie's family says she never learned to drive, so she relied on public transit to get to and from her two jobs. She worked at the Moda Center and the Portland Children's Museum, where she got to share her love of crafting and origami with others. Her co-workers at the museum say she is already greatly missed. Leslie was hit and killed Tuesday morning as she tried to get to the bus stop. Her family is now advocating for a traffic light to be put in where she was hit. ODOT is planning to add three flashing crosswalks along TV Highway. Way, but some say more needs to be done. Deputy Metro Council President Juan Carlos Gonzalez says he's been working for the past year to get a measure on the ballot in November that would fund safety improvements along TV Highway. I grew up along TV Highway and every single day I see people risking their lives walking across five lanes of traffic at 50 miles an hour just trying to get to the bus stop, trying to get to the grocery store, trying to get to school and I think that's unacceptable. Well, if you want to learn more about that proposal and the ballot, we'll post a link on our website. Just head to KGW.com. Back to you. Thank you, Lindsay. An emotional day in Olympia as Washington lawmakers consider a bill to protect victims of domestic violence. You might remember last year, Tiffany Hill was shot and killed by her estranged husband in the parking lot of a Vancouver elementary school. A bill named in her honor would give those who get legal protection orders like Tiffany had another layer of protection. As Drew Mickelson reports, it comes down to an alert on your cell phone. She was kind, she was fierce, she was open, she was loyal. Before Tiffany Hill became a mother of three, she was a Marine. She believed in serving her community. I feel that's the legacy she wanted to leave for her kids. Last November, Hill was shot and killed by her estranged husband, she was in her car in an elementary school parking lot in Vancouver, Washington. Her husband killed himself later that day. A colleague and I heard the gunshots from our classrooms. <sighs> Friends of Hill told her story to state senators. It's a cautionary tale. She was given a no contact order. For 64 days in a row, he violated that. I believe the state believes that if the defendant is released, he will kill the victim. Hill's estranged husband, Keelan Hill, had been arrested for violating that restraining order. And despite the concern of prosecutors, he was released on bail. Five days later, he killed Tiffany Hill. So I beg you, please consider Tiffany. Her friends came to Olympia to convince lawmakers to pass a bill that would give recipients of protection orders alerts on their cell phones if their potential attacker was within a thousand feet based on GPS tracking devices. They think that law might have saved Tiffany Hill's life. Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it is close to home. Republican I'm State Senator Linda Wilson, who grew up in an abusive home, has sponsored this bill for three years now. She thinks Tiffany Hill's story will be the difference this year. I really hope this is what, what makes it pass. 
just needs to. An appropriate way to memorialize a mother who made sure her country and family were safe. Of course I'd rather have my best friend here, but to think that there's a possibility that one other child is going to have their mom, you know, like this is all I have to do now, like this is it, I feel like this is what Tiffany would want. The state senator who has sponsored the bill thinks it has died in the past because of some fears over costs that would impact the state. She says she rewrote that section so the costs would mainly be covered by either the offenders or by the local courts. Another change, if this bill passes, it will be known as the Tiffany Hill Law. In Olympia, Drew Mickelson, KGW. And we will continue to follow that. Turning to the weather, Portland escaped the snow and ice today, but look at this, definitely not the gorge. The snow is coming down this morning in Cascade Locks. Even Troutdale got some snow, but not nearly as much stuck to the ground. There were some spin outs, but no major issues in the area. We also stopped by Corbett where kids got a snow day. Yay, kids. And as you might imagine, students were pretty happy about that. Snow day. Yes. <laughs> How does it feel? Feels nice, honestly. I had, uh, I think, two tests today, and I don't have to do them, so, you know, that's perfectly fine with me. I'm more than happy to stay in. The snow did cause some problems. The weather did shut down a stretch of Interstate 84 and Highway 26 east of Welch's this morning. They're both back open now. If you're traveling through the gorge, be sure to check the road conditions before you head out the door. Some areas do require chains. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino now. Matt, what can we expect the rest of the week? Oh, that's always the best when there's a snow day and you get out of not one but two tests because of the snow, right? Lucky guy there. All right, look at the coast right now. I'm showing you this for two reasons. First of all, it's really beautiful and running a time lapse for the later shows, but there's a lot of clearing happening all over Western Oregon right now. And with the clearing, the temperatures will be dropping down below freezing. Anything that is wet will freeze overnight tonight, so we may get some slick spots on the roads anywhere where the roads are wet, including in Portland. Uh, again, it's 43 degrees there right now. Let's check the snowfall forecast for tomorrow. Now we probably will get a little shot of snow even in the valley tomorrow morning, but this is only about two thirds of an inch, doesn't half an inch of snow, so I don't think it's really going to do much here and it will melt quickly, sort of like yesterday morning where we had the snowflakes in the air, didn't amount to much, and it all went away as we warmed on up. But tonight it's going to get cold. There'll be areas of freezing fog out there tonight. So again, there could be some slick areas on the roads. Morning snow showers turn to rain showers by late morning, really. So just a dusting for the valley floor, but more snow, more ice in the gorge on top of what you just showed us, Laura. So they're going to stay in the freeze for a while longer. Back to you. Thank you, Matt. It was a busy night for Portland firefighters responding to what they say was a string of intentionally set fires. The first was around 1130 last night at Northeast 102nd and Sandy, where they say someone broke in and lit a small fire inside. It's across the street from another burglary and arson earlier this month. At 1.30 in the morning, investigators say someone set fire to two portable toilets at a construction site at North Maryland and Holman. About an hour later, firefighters put out another suspicious fire at a home on Northeast 140th. Then at 3.45, firefighters found a stairwell filled with smoke at the U.S. Bank Tower, Big Pink, in downtown Portland. Investigators won't say what was on fire there, but say it was arson. If you have any information about these fires that might help investigators, call them at 503-823-INFO. There is new information tonight on the disappearance of an Albany woman. Police are now treating it as a missing persons and death investigation case, but would not reveal any more details. Police confirm Tiffany Lazan's estranged husband, Craig, is a person of interest. Craig was the last person to see her on December 27th. He says Tiffany was planning to move to Washington, but Tiffany's mother and daughter don't believe him. Police arrested Craig earlier this week for animal neglect involving Tiffany's cat. If you have any idea where Tiffany might be, call Albany Police. Southwest is the latest airline to delay returning Boeing 737 MAX jets to service. United, American and Southwest all say the MAX won't be on flight schedules until at least early June. And that's if the planes are given the all clear and regulators have repeatedly said there is no timeline to get them approved to fly again. Pilots will also likely have to be trained on simulators before the jets return. A coffee cart in Wilsonville is serving up hot drinks while the baristas running the cart serve time. 
Devin Haskins spent some time inside Coffee Creek Correctional Facility this week. To learn more about the cart, Devin, it's more than just making lattes here. Uh, Laura, it's teaching the baristas life skills, ones that they hope to parlay into a real job when they get paroled. You said you wanted a quad? The small coffee cart dubbed Upshot has been in place since Coffee Creek opened almost 20 years ago. Welcome to Coffee Creek. <laughs> That's not how we order. What do you want? <laughs> it's staffed periodically throughout the day. What kind of milk would you like? Uh, half an hour. It's open to inmates, their visitors, and staff with a selection of specialty drinks. And then we're going with coconut. Michaela Owens was sentenced to six years at Coffee Creek. At the age of 20, she thought her life was over. We have people like Miss Roach that give us chances, and it's really, um, it helps you be open to want to change and to be a better person. She's talking about Brittany Roach, <laughs> Life Skills Coordinator at Coffee yes, Creek. If we want to rehabilitate people, we need to give them skills and we need to treat them like people. Um, because when we instill confidence in them, they can start to find it in themselves. Special occasion or what? Michaela's goal when she's paroled soon is to open her own business and hopes what she's learned here helps her in the future. It taught me a lot, it taught me patience, a lot of patience and teamwork, team building, problem solving, things like that, you know, how to have healthy uh, relationships within like the work area. Because these skills teach you not to look back, but to look forward. The coffee cart is self-funded, meaning drinks purchased help pay for the cart and the coffee expenses. So just a few feet away, they're building a new coffee stand. It's bigger and warmer, so meaning they can make the drinks and keep out of the cold. Well, good luck to those yeah. women. Good work by them. Thank you, Devin. Still ahead at 5 o'clock, a mystery solve, but it's not good news. Scientists believe they know what caused a massive die-off of seabirds along the coast a few years ago, and it's now been linked to the blob. What has them worried about the future next?